One of the fun topics we cover at Lily Shaw is doubles formation. And what we are going to do on this video is concentrate on attacking formation. So, as you see here, we have set up a situation whereby the shuttle is in the corner and we have to decide where this player is going to be situated. Now, we don't know what this player is going to do. We don't know whether they're going to smash, play a drop shot, they're in trouble, they might have to play a clear. So we have to get into the right position and this is a supporting position for any kind of return that can be played. Until this shot is played, we need a base position. At Lily Shawl, I ask the players attending to put me where they think I should go. And believe me, I've had over here, over here, over here, over here, all of which are wrong. And you probably understand fully the reasons why they're wrong. So let's understand the function of this player and where they should be. So I'm going to put them here for now. And I know one or two of you may be thinking, but that is just so far away from the net. So let's discuss it a little bit. The function of this player is to close out this half first. This means there is very little room for the player who's going to be defending to place a shuttle. So it forces them to look to another area, which is a lot more difficult to do. Let's just think of the shots that can be played and we'll keep on the attack here. So if a smash is played and the shuttle is driven flat, it is this player's job to intercept that driven shot. Otherwise, if he's going past and dropping, then this could be too low in court for this player to maintain the attack and keep the pressure. So it is this player who needs to be able to intercept that drive and maintain pressure. If the shuttle is at cross court from there, the shuttle has to cross at some point to be in court. A step that way with a racket and obviously reach from the arm allows that player to intercept the flatter shot that way, allows them to intercept a block. Now let's be realistic with this block. If a defender hits a block, it is a fluke if it's going to land there. 80-90% of shots are going to land around this length, not that far away, whether on that side or that side. Again, not that far away. So this player should be able to intercept the blocks in both directions. That's their function. So the only place that is potentially wide open is if this defender can get the shuttle in that corner, which is incredibly difficult. At intermediate level, I wouldn't say it's impossible because there's always somebody who can prove you wrong, but it is just very, very hard indeed. Let's just focus back here. So we have covered all the responses to this half. We've already said we've covered all the responses here. So I say there's only a gap, potentially, and it is only potentially, behind this player. What happens if this player doesn't hit a smash and hits a drop shot? What happens then? So I will say we play the drop shot into here. This player's got to come forward to take that shot. This player, seeing that, moves into position to maintain pressure on the net area to make it difficult for him to just play there. And this player moves back into a base position. That is good doubles positioning. 
From here, if they go cross court, they've got that one there. If you go straight, they've got that. If you go mid court, this player is moving forwards onto that shot to keep it flat or to play into another zone, but try and maintain pressure. So positioning is absolutely vital. I had this discussion with a player recently uh, in mixed doubles and the lady says, I'm not hitting the shuttle. I said, you might not be in a position where you are getting lots of hits, but because you are holding position, you are, you are performing your function on court at this moment in time, which is to close out the gaps. So the non-hitting player in a game is so vital because they either close the gaps or they leave them wide open. Let's just have a look at if that play was over there, which some players believe should be the case. Let's see. Smash the shuttle to there, and we block to there. Now, who's going to take that block? Wide open. This is not this person's position to be coming in and taking all a drop shot or a smash and then taking a net return. Now for some of you, you may believe that is incorrect and that it is their job because you play this game called sides or front and back. I'd be very worried about that. And if I ever hear that on court when somebody says, shall we play sides or front and back? I know there are fundamental problems with these players and how they think on court. Front and back and sides are situational in a game. They are not mainstay tactics. So we are front and back, they are sides because the situation demands the shuttle is high in this corner, they're attacking, they're defending. Simple as that. So attacking pair. As we said, the idea is that we move according to where the, sh the shot is played and therefore cover the gaps. And we're covering those shots which give us least response time. Remember that phrase, really important, least response time. So drop shot, I cover that because I want to be in a position to hit down and maintain attack. If a shuttle goes into the centre, we both move into the centre. If for some reason from there, the shuttle's played over there, which we hope you don't do very often, I hit a drop shot. If I see a drop shot from there, think what you're giving away from there. This player's got to see it, move across quickly, and this player's already way out of position. That shot goes in that corner, they will struggle. Hence the reason we don't hit many cross calls, especially in level doubles. Okay, we have this formation. We understand it now. So, playing a drop shot, we're moving. One's taking base there, the other's taking a base. We'll come back to these bases in a minute, but I just want to mention uh, one other thing I've mentioned on other videos. This mid call area here, absolutely critical in the game. This is a tactical stronghold of the net, I call it the castle. This is the outer wall of the castle. If my opponents can raid the outer wall and have me lifting the shuttle where it's high to the rear court or, or lifting up to the net, my castle is about to be raided because I've already got this. I don't want that to happen. So I need to move and shut out these gaps as quickly as I can. Now, mention base positions, and I want to finish this video talking about base positions. In my opinion, when we're attacking, there are base positions for both players. Let's just start with the rear court player. Wherever they hit, when the shuttle is in this half, okay, let's just put it in this zone at the moment. This base position at the moment, being the centre of the court, in my opinion, is their outer marker. It means they're not going to have a base position there because it's too one-sided. 
have left too much of the court wide open. But if he shovels on this side, that covers there and there. There's more time if the shuttle gets onto that side. If the shuttle's played to centre, the base position changes. If the shuttle is on this half, then the base position is in the centre. Some might want it a little bit further over. That to me is the outer marker. So we have two outer markers on court. One there, one there. This player will take different base positions according to where the shuttle will be, the alignment, on court. If they're doing that, they are what's known as following the play. And as long as they continue to follow the play and don't go beyond their outer markers, then there's always a good possibility of responding and getting to the shuttle on time. Consequently, this is the player who's got a base position, so has this one. When the shuttle is high on this side, and the shuttle is in play there now, we've already agreed that this is a player that is going to be important because they either close the gaps or they leave them wide open. So their base position is here. Depending what shot is played, will decide whether that base position needs to move. If the shuttle is played as a drop shot, their base position moves accordingly. They are now taking a position that allows them to take those shots there. If it's going to go across court from over there, it's got to cross the net somewhere. Furby's point is probably there. Even from that point, we can close that in. So we're in a good position. So we need to remember our base positions. If I come in and play a shot, I've got to get back to base position. If the shuffle is still around the net area. If I've done that, played it back, they've moved in, lifted, I now go to that base position. And so on. So base positions are really, really important. That's it. That's our attacking formation. I'll see you in another video. Thank you.